What's doing, everybody? I'm Alec Lace. Thank you for watching First Class Fatherhood. Today's guest on the podcast is actor Sean Patrick Flannery. You may remember Sean Patrick Flannery from the Boondock Saints, but aside from being a great actor, he is also a black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu and just recently starred in a mixed martial arts movie, Born a Champion, and it is so much more than a mixed martial arts movie. It's about fatherhood, faith, family, love, and so much more. The movie is a banger. The link to that movie is down there in the description below. While you're down there, tap the like, hit the subscribe, and let's jump into it right now with Sean Patrick Flannery on First Class Fatherhood. Joining me now, First Class Father, Sean Patrick Flannery. Welcome to First Class Fatherhood. Pleasure to be here, brother. All right, let's kick it off like this here. How many kids do you have? How old are they? I have three kids. I have six, nine, and 15. Wow, very cool. What kind of sports or activities are they all into? Everything. Uh, let's see. Um, my daughter had her first jujitsu class at uh, five years old. Uh, both of my sons started at four years old. Uh, my, my old, my nine year old son is the current Texas state champion at wrestling. Uh, my, my youngest son, uh, just won his first nationals in wrestling. Uh, they've both been doing jujitsu since diapers. Uh, they both swim, uh, football, swimming, uh, jujitsu, wrestling, for the most part, that's what yeah. we do. Yeah, very cool, very cool. If you could, Sean, please just take a second here to hit my listeners with a little bit about your background and what you do. Uh, my name is Sean Patrick Flannery. Uh, most people know me as uh, an actor. Uh, I started martial arts when I was nine years old. It's been uh, a monumental factor in what I became as a human. I'm not saying that's a great thing or a, a, a bad thing, but it, but, it, but it is directly responsible. I know that a large portion of what fo formed me are athletics. Uh, I, can, I can tell you every name of every sports coach I've ever had. I can't tell you every math teacher I've had. can't tell you every English teacher I've had. But I, there is not a sports coach that directed me that I can't picture their face to this day. Uh, from Coach Eisenhower when I was six years old on the Brayburn Bears. I can still see his face to this day. Um, so that's who I am. But m mainly, uh, I'm a dad. Um, and, uh, you know, the goals in your life kind of change as you, as you, you know, you reach tenure. And uh, certainly uh, my focus now is on my kids. Yeah, and right on that, Sean, uh, about how old were you then when you first became a father and how did becoming a dad change your perspective on life? <laughs> You know, it, 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 it's funny. Everybody says, you know, having kids will change your life. And it's a Hallmark card until it happens. You know, you, you, you don't understand the, 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 the amount of importance that a, another human body can possess until you, you have a child of your own. And, and it truly recalibrates everything that you thought was right, wrong, and true. It really does. It, 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 it is a reprogramming, and uh, you see it in movies all the time when people say, well, I would die for, or this means, and it, 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 it just sounds nonsensical until it happens, and, and, and it, it truly changes your priorities in every sense of the word. Yeah, yeah very well said, Sean, and what, what would you consider then, what would you say are the top values that you're hoping to instill in your kids growing up? <laughs> Oh my God, the, the, the values that I want to, you know, I, I think kids are little messages in a bottle. I think you put everything in your kids that you want the future to see. I think, you know, it's, it's funny because everybody, nobody really knows what to do with their life, but they all want another one that'll last forever. <laughs> and, 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 and if that is a goal of yours, then you're talking about immortality. I think it's important to understand that the only thing immortal is legacy. And I, I think the whole purpose in life is to live a life worth remembering and to leave behind an inexhaustible legacy for your kids. And I think once you really swallow that and put it somewhere, it makes understanding the concept of life starting and ending much more easy whenever you realize that this is what immortality is. It's leaving behind something worthy. I, I truly believe that my goal is to leave behind a better version. And, uh, I certainly have my faults and issues with that, that that shouldn't be a problem, but that's my goal. My goal is to leave behind something better than I came here with. 
And hopefully I'm doing that with my kids, but character, integrity, values. Um, I want them to have all of the life skills so that they can leap over adversity like a hurdler. Um, I want them to have an unfair advantage. And at the same time, I also know that, uh, you know, achievers, you know, acquire. And then the offspring of the acquirer usually doesn't have the hunger to go out and acquire. So I want to kind of fix that generational skip with my kids. Um, I, I, I want, you know, my granddaddy told me when I was a kid, he said, you know, you, you can obtain wealth one of two ways. You can increase what you have or reduce what you need. I want my kids to have a certain austerity principle. I, I, I want them to have a frugality about them. I want them to only take from life in the world what's absolutely necessary. Don't get me wrong. I don't want them to enjoy everything. But, you know, it, it, it's, it's a difficult balance trying to create someone that's both ambitious and content. And uh, hopefully I can merge those two worlds. Um, but I think that's the goal of every father, to be honest with you, you know. Yeah, yeah, good stuff, Sean. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. There's a big dichotomy when it comes to that because I feel like my kids have everything they could ever want. And I, I, sometimes I, I feel uh, comfortable because of that. And sometimes I feel like um, it's a detriment to them because they do. So I know that sometimes it could be a, a tough balance because I think a lot of the stories that we hear about great people are the ones that had to overcome some type of adversity. So if the kids don't learn, I feel like we kind of keep our kids in organized sports. They play soccer at four years old. Everything is organized. When we were kids. It was more like we made up everything. We met up at the field. There was no coaches, no referees. And we had the freedom to kind of build those necessary problem solving skills at a very early age that our kids, not, not just generalizing that don't seem to get that skill set today. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll tell you, the easy life does not breed champions at all. And, uh, you know, a, a lot of parents are reluctant to, to, to place difficulty in a child's life. But without that, you're going to have a disaster. You're going to have a human being that is absolutely going to implode. And so the best way that I can do that is to incorporate it in a game. You know, I, 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 have, a, I have a martial arts academy in my backyard. It's that important to me. Um, and on that red mat, they are presented with more real problems. It, 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 it's not a metaphor for, for, for pain. It is pain. Uh, when, whenever you're training, that room will come closer to breaking a human being than just about any other room that they're ever going to be in. And, you know, when they get into a tough math class, you know, you can say metaphorically, oh, that math class almost broke me. But really... The martial arts mat is not a metaphor. It truly will break you. You know, when they say money is power, and metaphorically it is, but really, power is power. And that mat truly changes who you are. You know, if, 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 if somebody sticks something in front of you multiple times that forces you to jump over it, you become used to leaping. And that's what I want for my kids. I want them to have that ability. I don't, I don't want them to ever be shaken. I don't want them to ever be surprised. You know, I, I, I mean, my goal is to give them an education and that's preparing for all of life's situations. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of uh, people out there that disagree with, uh, you know, hard martial arts training for me and my family, I'll tell you, and, and this flies in the face of a lot of people. We have a lot of discussions about this. Uh, a number of uh, parents, for example, uh, I, I don't know what happened in our culture where, it, it, it's widely accepted. Everybody, everybody agrees. 100% of the population agrees. It is a good thing to educate your child. Every, every kid should learn math and reading and writing. But somewhere along the line, we always believe that you got to grow this. But somewhere along the line, we stop saying you got to grow this. And I'll tell you, without a healthy body, that thing is going to fail. You have kids out there that whose parents firmly believe they really need to get good at math, but they're morbidly obese. I, I, I'm a firm believer that there's certain life skills. If I'm going to put my child out into the world, my child is going to know life skills. Now, granted, if your child doesn't want to play baseball, that's an elective. Maybe they don't have to play baseball. I don't think there are many problems in life that are going to be solved on second base. But your child is 
eventually going to find himself on a boat and think, if I fall off, will I sink or swim? Swimming is a life skill. To me, that's not an elective. Every child should learn how to swim. Every child should learn self-defense. These are problems that I don't care how hermetically sealed you secure your child. Eventually, someone's going to try and take something from them. And it's going to put them in a very, very bad situation. No different than when the bank teller says, oh, five deposits, what's the total? The kid's either going to go, uh, what? Or he's going to go, well, here, addition, three, three sums, that's the number. Same thing. When you're presented with a problem where somebody tries to break your will, you either have the ability to maintain your will or you allow it to be broken. And uh, in my household, we focus on all of those life skills. I want to prepare my kids. I want to give them an unfair advantage. I do. Maybe that makes me brutal and angry. But I, 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 I love my kids deeply. And I spend 24 hours a day with my kids. But I want to prepare them. I don't want them to go out into the real world and get shot in any situation. Yeah, right on there, Sean. I know, listen, I know that you're big with the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu has really blown up here over the last decade or so. And I know you're, you're a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. It's been a big part of your life and you got your kids in it. I've had Jocko Willink on the show here. He's a big advocate for it. And many other guys, Dana White, the UFC has really blown up. I've had a lot of these guys on the show, but the sport, it, it is a brutal one. So I know you got you got your kids in it young as they progress and, and continue to get better in this um, in this game. If they wanted to take this to a professional level, how would you feel as a dad about allowing your kids to get in there and do this uh, where striking is involved and, and, and things like that could ensue? You know, right now we're training for life's inevitabilities. Um, you know, I just had a movie come out called Born a Champion. And I put my two boys in it. Um, and it, for me, they made their acting debut and their retirement all in one film because at my house, Kidding is a full-time job. Being a child, uh, they, they, they're not going to make their own occupational decisions until they're legally old enough to do so. Um, if I, I'm going to train my kid for in, any inevitability, if, 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 if my son takes a girl to prom when she's 16 and another guy grabs her in, in a way that he doesn't like, he's going to have the ability to make sure that that never happens again. When my son goes to somebody's door and says, Hi, Mr. Wilson, I'm here to pick up your daughter. That dad is going to know for a fact that his daughter is in good hands. That is my goal. Now, if my son gets to be 17, 18 years old and he says, hey, these skills that you put in me, these fighting, I'd really like to test them in the sport that is MMA. I'm okay with it. My child is going to make his own decisions as a grown, developed man. I'm going to give him all those tools. Um, but uh, he's going to He's going to be front loaded with the tools to be prepared should he make a decision in either direction. Yeah, well said, Sean. And you just mentioned it there, born a champion. Uh, what was the genesis? Why did you make the film? And what has been the response you've gotten so far from the audience? You know, it's, it's, it's like anything in life. You know, you, you, you know I, every single acting role I've ever done. I've heard I, and it, even roles that were inconsequential. I've had people go, oh, my God, you should get an Academy Award. And then people that are like, you can't act to save your life. You should quit tomorrow. I mean, I'm, you know, you, you, so uh, you, once you understand that, that you're going to get both extremes, you kind of have to weed through them to get to the truth or really not read any of them or just understand that everybody's opinion varies. Uh, but for whatever reason, this film has got a, a pretty strong response. Uh, I think it spoke to a lot of people, um, and, and the response is kind of overwhelming. I'm flattered. I'm tickled. Uh, you know, it is, a, it, it is a big passion of mine, um, and it is about, uh, you know, it's about five things. It's about faith, family, fatherhood, love, and legacy, exactly what we're talking about right now. So it's uh, because it, it, it comes from a pretty deep place, at least in my life, and this is a story I wrote back in 2007. It's uh, flattering to find that, uh, you know, it spoke to some people. It, it offended a lot of people as well. There are a lot of uh, old school values in that film that uh, filled my inbox with a lot of hate. Um, but it's counteracted. I, I think the preponderance of feedback has been positive. And this is, uh, there, there, there's a lot of lifestyle 
elements in that film that fly in the face of uh, 2021 popular culture. So it's kind of a, it's been, it's been uplifting to realize that a lot of those uh, concepts aren't dead. Yeah, I, I agree. And uh, I'm going to drop a link in the description of this podcast episode so my listeners can tap the link, get up there, find out more about it, and check the film out. I, it, it seemed like it was going to be another uh, martial arts type of film. And then, man, the story was incredible. I really love the way you tied in, just like everything that you said there. And I, I take some slack for that, too, because I talk about on this show a lot the fatherless crisis that we have going on in our country. We got way too many kids are growing up without a father in their life. And it's not to take, I usually get the blowback from saying, hey, you know, it's, it's nothing against single moms. Um, I think they're doing, uh, you know, tremendous work out there and, and, and God help them. But I just think that's not the ideal situation here. And if we can get more kids to grow up with more dads involved in their life, I think the majority of the problems we're seeing in our society would start to fade away pretty quickly. Uh, understatement of the year. The vast majority of problems would go away quickly. Look, hats off to any football team that goes onto the field with six players. Hats off to them. They're courageous. They're probably going to do a stellar job. Chances are they're going to get smoked by a full-size team. I think the gold standard has to be both a dad and a mother. That should be the gold standard. And at the end of the day, look, I, I think the, 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 the biggest imperative for being a good dad starts long before you even have a child. The most important decision I will make is who I procreate with. And unfortunately, the courtship process in 2021 is nothing more than, oh, shit, nice ass. Ooh, look at the rack on that. I think it's got to be something far deeper. I I I'll tell you this. My wife, when it got serious and I realized I want my children to be like her, I everything that she is, I want my children to be like. And you start considering, should we start a family? I'm not kidding. I interviewed her. I said, who'd you vote for? Or do you believe in vaccinations? What is your ideas on fiscal responsibility? Um, uh, do you believe in corporal punishment? Do you believe in homeschooling? Do you believe all of those things? Because those are things that tear a family apart. And I don't care how good of a dad you are. If you can't stay with the person and see eye to eye, then you're going to bring somebody into the world that has a fractured family. The first decision I can make for my child comes far before the child enters the world. It's in my selection of the team that is going to raise him. And the onus is on me to keep that team together. And I'm not saying you should do it even if it's horrible. I'm saying you should select correctly to where it's not a, damn, do I stay or do I leave her? If you select correctly, you don't have those questions. I can't comprehend leaving my wife. Sorry about that. I can't right. comprehend it because I did all the requisite questions. And, and, and I know it may, it may not be, it may not be courteous to, to it may not be romantic to, to, to say that, but I had a list of questions. I said, if we're going to do this, if we're going to bring another life into the world, let's talk about our philosophy, our, 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 our all the things. What about religion? Let's talk about how we're going to raise this child. Because something as stupid as you marry a girl, you bring a child into the world, and suddenly she says, A, I don't believe in vaccinations, and B, I want to go live in sub-Saharan Africa. Well, that's a huge issue for me. <laughs> and it should be a huge issue for anybody. But those could come up. And how dare you it, it, it embark on arguably the greatest thing that you've ever attempted to do Without full working knowledge of your teammates, that, d that defies logic to me. The most important thing that I can do for my child is selecting who I'm going to make the parent and who is going to raise that child. Uh, in 2021, those decisions are made because of, uh, hey, I got a jacuzzi at home. You want to come check it out? 
Yeah, and, and Sean, what, what I think a lot of that has to do is the way we see dads portrayed in the movies and on TV. A lot of the times we see the single guy kind of glorified. He's getting laid. He's sleeping with all these other women. He's living that lifestyle, and he has no responsibility. But the family guy, he's always kind of got his head tucked down, and he's never getting laid. He's never having any action. So I, I think our culture does a bad part of just saying, like, that starting a family is a serious thing. we got to treat it. Uh, as a such a serious thing. And I think we're looking at it like it's just, well, if it don't work out, it don't work out. But now we have this byproduct. We have this child that's out there and it gets lost in in all this other stuff. So I think it's um, I think we, we as a, a culture really need to get focused on, on strengthening our family units. And, and and God forbid we bring God back into our society, too. I think those two things together uh, would really skyrocket what's going on in our country here. Well, to say it would skyrocket it again is the understatement of the year. If you want something that would solve north of 95% of the world's problems, it's having a solid family structure, a solid family structure, a mother and a father who love each other, deep love, then that offspring you are going to love. You're going to want to spend time with your offspring when it's, when it's born from somebody that you, you are enamored with that you identify with every single one of your, 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 your wife, your husband's traits, and you want your son or daughter to be exactly like them, then you're going to want, then you're going to create somebody that, that you enjoy being around. You know, I, I, I've met countless people that don't like their kids. They simply don't like their kids. It's an effort to spend time with their kids. They don't like their wife. In turn, they don't like their, their, their son or their daughter. And it's an effort for me. I love my wife and I love my kids. I think they're funny. They're witty. I want to be around them. So it's not an effort, but you know, it's like you, 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 you got to choose correctly. You have to choose correctly. Yeah. Well said, Sean. What now you got a born a champion is out now. What kind of projects or goals here do you have that you're working on uh, coming up for the future? Uh, well, right now, I told you I'm in Canada. I'm standing right by, by a window that's freezing my butt off. That's why I have them wrapped around my neck. Um, I'm up here to do an a, a Amazon a TV show. It's called The Boys, about uh, superheroes. Uh, it's, they're in their third season. So I just got up here for that. So that's what's uh, uh, in the future for me, that I'm, I'm doing that um, tomorrow. I work. Um, and uh, right now, this is the longest I've ever been away from my family, ever. So uh, going on two weeks now. So really, my head is getting back home. Uh, my boys have a wrestling tournament uh, this weekend, and it's uh, not something I've ever missed, ever, not once in my life. So be, this will be a first. So it's a little bit difficult, but uh, what does the future hold for me? Uh, raising my boys, raising my boys, and uh, enjoying seeing them blossom, man. Yeah. Good stuff, Sean. And the last thing I'm going to hit you with here, I love to ask all the dads that I get on the podcast. I'm sure you touched on it a little bit as we were talking about what, what type of advice do you have for that new dad or for that about to be father that's out there listening? You know, I, I, I can't, I can't stress it strongly enough for a new dad. Uh, it's just like any team, you know, chemistry is important with any team on paper. You can take the best running back, the best quarterback, the best receivers, the best O line. But if there's not a cohesive chemistry, that team is going to fail. So search for it. D decide wisely before someone gets pregnant. Make a decision. Don't, don't, don't go into this with one eye open. Make a decision of who you're going to parent with and, and everything. I mean, pe people write down grocery lists so they don't forget the bananas. But they don't even write their own personal goals down. They don't even write down, what do I want to achieve by being a father? Who am I going to do this with? They don't spend any time in that decision process. It's, oh my God, she's hot. We should start a family. And you don't know anything about what makes that person tick. Are we going to have God in our life? Are you an atheist? Who knows? But pre-plan. Pre-plan just like you do for your, the, your first home purchase. When you look at the square footage and where you're going to place every piece of furniture, do we have enough storage for this, for that? People spend an immense amount of time on nonsensical things like that that are nonsensical, but they pale in comparison to bringing another life into this world. Think about it. Write it down. What are your secrets, your hopes, your dreams? And make sure that those align with your mate. 
Yeah, very well said. I love the message. It's been an honor for me. I got to say, Sean Patrick Flannery, you're a first class father all the way. And thank you so much for giving me a few minutes of your time here on First Class Fatherhood. I appreciate it, brother. God bless.